The principal geographical re regions where EROW pose a problem are those areas fought over, often repeatedly since the American Civil War, when explosive devices were first used at scale. And this means essentially the First World War theatre, as you can see on the left, and parts of Spain and Manchuria, and of course, all the conflict theatres of the 1939-45 war. That is much of continental Europe and European Russia, North Africa, and large parts of the so-called, then called China Bur Burma India theatre, Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, and parts of China, as well as the Pacific theatre, including the Pacific island chains of Micronesia and Melanesia. Post-war conflicts sadly include Suez and parts of the Middle East, the Indochina region, including once more Vietnam, Laos, you can see in the middle there a threat map of it, Cambodia, and more recently the Falklands, which has just been declared mine-free, Afghanistan, and since the collapse of the Soviet Union, Chechnya, parts of the Arabian Gulf, former Yugoslavia, Ukraine, bits of the Lebanon, and most recently Syria and parts of Libya. In all these areas, airdrop weapons and sometimes mines and occasional battlefield ordnance are an inherent development hazard, causing at best delay, but always, always additional cost. For this webinar, we shall concentrate on the Second World War, during which time the fighting powers between them dropped over 5 million tons of ordnance, three quarters of which were expended in the last 10 months of the war. As the European part of the conflict ended, teams from the British Bombing Survey Unit and the United States Strategic Bombing Survey <clears throat> began to investigate bomb targets in France and Germany in order to assess the effectiveness of the bombs and fuses they used, partly for intelligence purposes and in part to prepare for the coming bombing campaign against Japan. In the event, the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki made the work unnecessary and the American Strategic Survey completed its project in Japan in 1946. The British and the American surveys in particular discovered quite rapidly that one bomb in six did not work as intended, their phrase, with most of these failing to go off completely. With some 15% of these bombs failing, and of these perhaps a quarter still undiscovered, we may be looking at uh, something like 750,000 remaining unexploded bombs, most of which fell in Europe. Looking at the UK statistics, we know some 75,000 tons were aimed at UK targets. And of this total, it is estimated as many as one in 10 bombs dropped did not explode as intended. And of these, again, one may calculate about a quarter remain undiscovered. So anything up to seven and a half thousand bombs remain. On average in Britain, some 60 airdrop bombs are recovered a year, according to the Ministry of Defense, as opposed to the hundreds found in Germany. Now, assuming that we recover these at a constant rate in the UK anyway, it will be well over a century before they're all cleared. But there is one fly in the ointment, as it were. As, as time passes, some types of bomb are becoming more dangerous. These are bombs with time delay fuses, and you can see a cross section of one in the center. These were designated to explode any time up to a week after they struck the ground. Now in mainland Europe, one or two of these now explode every year, quite spontaneously. And one, if not both, are usually somewhere in Germany. And there's a, an image on the right showing uh, one um, in a field. And the reason is that components in these complex fuses are failing and leading to spontaneous explosions, as I mentioned. This is causing regulation changes with any bomb suspected of being equipped with a time delay fuse being exploded on site rather than defused and removed. The good news in the UK is that these types of time fuses are not found in Britain. From such statistics, it's clear that in many parts of Europe, the chance of encountering a dud bomb from the Second World War during a construction project is not negligible. In Germany, the legal framework is clear. If you are involved with construction planning in an area of risk, you must commission an ERW search but elsewhere, the regulations are more ad hoc.